Well, first, thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, we've been very long-term investors in Google. Our basic thesis uh, on Alphabet, basic thesis is if you subtract out the values for their cash, for the investment spending that they're making in other bets, that you're paying less than a market multiple for search. And as part of that, we've never been too concerned about the potential regulatory effect that you could get at Alphabet or frankly Meta as well, that might result in having to split up parts of the company and perhaps have those trade separately. Uh, the advertising business, uh, you know, obviously that's, that's a, a important business to Alphabet, but if that piece traded separately, we think it would force investors to recognize a higher value. That's uh, in a kind of breakup scenario. I do wonder if around the edges, uh, if there are some kind of limits around whether it's, you know, Alphabet uh, sort of privileging its own, uh, its own sites, its own products in search results and things like that. I think parts of the world have some restrictions on this. Are those things that you think move the needle at all for the growth rate of the ad business? Uh, no, we basically don't think that, uh, that that's changing the profitability of Alphabet significantly. So that type of regulatory action wouldn't concern us. Now, just more broadly, Bill, I mean, I wonder what you're finding in terms of either fresh values or things you have more or less conviction in in this market. You've had a pretty good reset uh, lower uh, to the uh, overall indexes. Average stocks underperform that. Earnings have more or less come through. That would suggest that more values are surfacing. Is that what you're finding? Yeah, we think there's a lot of opportunity today for an investor. Of course, that's that's our general position at Oakmark is that long-term investors should be in the equity market for most of their assets. And mm -hmm. today, despite the market selling at a mid or upper teens multiple, we think there are a lot of opportunities at very low PE multiples. The uh, financial sector of the market, the banks, uh, Ally Financial is one of our largest holdings, a uh, large car lender, sells at five times earnings, Capital One, the large credit card company is about six times earnings. Citibank, in the midst of a turnaround, is about seven times earnings. And all three of those companies are generating a lot of cash flow today that they can't profitably reinvest in the business. So that capital is all coming back to shareholders in the form of repurchases and dividends. We think that's a sector of the market that's just too cheap today. And just, I mean, obviously, you know, maybe one of the cautionary thoughts there is simply that, you know, relatively cyclical stocks, financials, when they trade at cheap uh, multiples of current or future earnings, it means, you know, there's concern about what the economy is going to do when those earnings are at peak. Uh, clearly, you don't really think that a, that a recession is going to, you know, wipe out the earnings outlook? Well, we've had two quarters of down GDP. That In the past, that's always been called a recession. But what's different this time is the employment outlook is so much stronger, especially for the bottom quartile of earners. Uh, they've seen r real wage increases and no shortage of job opportunities at all. And uh, credit card uh, spenders don't default on their bills or auto uh, borrowers don't default on their bills unless they lose their jobs. And uh, we, th we think the prospects for maintaining their jobs throughout this economic soft period uh, are quite strong. I think the typical investor is going back to the past two recessions, uh, the pandemic and also the Great Recession uh, that the housing market caused in 08, and the kind of following the playbook of which companies performed the worst in those two recessions. I, those were not typical recessions at all. Most of my right. career, it's been a recession like what we're in now, where there's a debate during the recession of are we in one or are we not in one? And by the mm -hmm. time there's general agreement that we're in a recession, we're on the way out of it. So uh, we, we think the financials are well positioned this time uh, to stay strong throughout, uh, throughout a downturn. And Bill, uh, before we let you go, just love your quick take on Disney, which you own, which we're expecting earnings from. Really a, kind of a contrarian call here. Went from being a, a, a favorite during the pandemic to actually being uh, really uh, neglected or cast aside by investors here. Right. As you know, Mike, the stock uh, fell, to, fell more than 50 percent. It's recovered a little bit. But at today's price, if you, if you assume that they would earn the 
cyclically low operating margin that Netflix has on their streaming business, Disney would be selling at 15 times earnings and everybody's paying attention to streaming, but the theme parks are half the operating income, even if we normalize streaming to a normal multiple. And the theme parks are about as good a business as you can imagine. So we don't own Disney for the earnings report this week. We own it because we think it's a great business and the market isn't making you pay a lot for it.